day to you. What a day, my God. I realize the days of the pool are numbered. <laughs> so I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to have that as the backdrop. Not to tease anybody, just to realize that the days of the pool are numbered. I think I, I'm getting close to needing a haircut again. You know, that's why I wear a hat, you know, my duty run, except I have some hair on, on, the, on the dome, you know. So, guys, it's uh, been a, a great week uh, for Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories. Uh, I posted everywhere, basically. We went over 30,000 subscribers. To me, I'm proud of that. It's taken a long time. Ruthann Griffin, hello, how are you? It's taken a long time to reach that milestone, and I want to thank all of you guys that are subscribers. I want to especially thank Duty Ron, uh, who has redirected some of his audience toward my shows after his show. And it's uh, Shalane Thomas, and hello, how are you? And it's done uh, amazing things. Phil Grimaldi, hello, Sergeant Mill, congratulations on 30K. Phil, you have something to do with that too. Thank you for being my Joe Pesci lookalike co host. Uh, We've worked really hard. Um, it's not just what you do on the air. It's the preparation and it's the knowledge that you bring to the show. And it's the personality that you bring to the show. I think that makes people want to listen, you know? And uh, I got some plane coming by. Um, and I, I, get, I get excited about it, you know? To say that this isn't a labor of love would not be, uh, I mean, how do you get to use your expertise and talk about it uh, with, with great knowledge on the topic, uh, both myself and, and Phil Grimaldi, and uh, share your knowledge with people, but you know, not in an overly serious, I mean, it's serious, of course, but there's some humor to our show, you know? Beautiful day. Love your real life work stories. Thank you. Beautiful day. And uh, HXFX. Hello from Colorado. So, well, thank you guys. You know something? It's you guys that are in the chat. You guys who um, come on. You are, you are our subscribers. You are the ones that helped us reach this milestone. And you know something? You never stop. You know, you never stop. We hit 30,000 now. The next goal, of course, is 40, you know. Uh, but you know something, I just got to take it, what do they say, uh, slow and steady wins the race. I think that's what I have to realize. I'm a type A personality, and sometimes I go get crazy. I make my wife crazy. She goes, you're never happy. You're never happy. And I'm happy. I mean, I'm happy. 24 hours, I spread the word. We hit 30,000. I'm so excited. Duty Ron called me this morning at like 7.30 in the morning to congratulate me. And I, I again, I can't be uh, thank him enough. He's helped so, so much. He helped me figure out um, the in, ins and outs of, of YouTube. And it, believe me, there is. There's a... Uh, Marilyn Mineta. Thank you, Marilyn. I, I try to answer you all the time, your emails and your messages. Uh, I thank you so much for all you do. Pauline Buckles, wow, 30,000, that's awesome. You know, it's uh, sometimes you get uh, uh, William Angus Barter. I love that name, Angus. <laughs> Congratulations from Rock Springs. Is that Wyoming? How cool, you know. You know, a, a detective that was in my team in Homicide, this guy, uh, Mark Worthington. Uh, Don Salami is even sending us congratulations. My God, he's taken his time off from searching for all that stolen cheese, and he's congratulating us. Sherry Hill, congrats, Bill and Phil. A detective that worked for me in the Homicide Squad, Mark Worthington, was a great, is a great, was, was and is a great detective. I think now he works for the Manhattan DA's office, he said. But one of his friends said, uh, from North Carolina said to him, he goes, oh, do you know those guys from Police Off the Cuff Real Crime Stories? And Mark uh, Worthington said, yeah, he was my sergeant. And he goes, I listen to that show all the time. So it's amazing when you have national and for some ways international um people that listen to you it's humbling and it's like wow that's unbelievable right people are listening to us from all over the country uh all over the world and you know it's humbling it's very humbling gail salatory congratulations hi guys cheers man i'm happy today i mean how could i not be you know again you take you take a, a second to uh 
not take a bow, but to just say, wow, we worked hard. We reached 30,000. And you keep working hard. You know, so this case of uh, Jay Johnson, congratulations from Kingsport, Tennessee. Thank you, Jay. Um, this case of Kylie Rodney. Um, this whole week, we, we covered it and we covered it before this. It's a heartbreaking case, you know. And, um, you know, I titled the, um, the show yesterday as basically, I don't know, remember the exact title, but the police failed, um, but Adventures with Purpose succeeded. And I don't want it to sound all that harsh that uh, we're putting the police down. But how else can we, if we're going to be true to the investigation and true to what actually occurred, how else could we talk about this case? The police searched a very specific area, a, a reservoir, you know, um, and they missed, they missed the vehicle. They missed finding Kylie and they used sonar and they had, um, they had searched, you know, probably a week before. And what they had told Adventures with Purpose was like, you can clear that area. We already searched it. And to the credit of Adventures with Purpose, they said, no, we'll, we'll redo it. Uh, we'll redo it. Kim Allison, Detective Phil, your hard work, professionalism, comedy, educational, compassion. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Amazing. And you know something? We get a very specific type of fan, subscriber, friend, I like to call it. I remember one woman one time, she says, I'm not a fan, I'm a subscriber. I said, look, if you don't like that I call you a fan, there's other podcasts. You're, you're our fans, you know, and our subscribers and our friends, hopefully, you know. And you come to this podcast because you like the way we do things. You like the non-bullshit, the non-drama, how we talk about investigations. We're not that dramatic. We're not making stuff up. Christopher Axton, congratulations to all of the police off the cuff team. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you so much. So we try to give you these cases from a police perspective and minus the drama and tell you this is what's going to happen and this is why it's going to happen and this is why the police did this and this is why they did that. One of the things that we've learned, I think, and not just me, I know Duty Ron, we've spoken about this too, is that when you go across the country to different police departments, uh, there's different talent levels. Not all police departments or even have remotely have the skill set or the training of the large police departments like New York City, um, Chicago, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Miami. These larger departments they have the experience and they have the training. So sometimes you go across the country and you shake your head like, what the hell are they doing? I still have nightmares about the um, Gonzalo Lopez case in Texas. That was that escaped inmate. Uh, William Angus Barter, sonar images are different on new targets of less than 20s. Okay, I'm not... I'm not ready to get into that. I'm going to get into that. I'm just talking about the talent level of different police departments. That, that Texas, that search for that Gonzalo Lopez, that escaped inmate, it was horrendous. And the fact that they didn't do their job well from a PR standpoint, they didn't use the press well, they lackadaisical, they, they okie-dokied that case. And it resulted in a family of five being murdered by a, a, an inmate probably who should have been ex executed, you know. And that's the type of um, police departments we're seeing across the country. And I'm not saying that the uh, Nevada County Sheriff's Office is one of those. They're not as experienced as many police departments. But I really liked their captain who was a spokesperson, Captain Sam Brown good guy. I could tell he's a good guy. And you know something? He did not, you know, he was a, hum he was very humble. First of all, they accepted the help of Adventures with Purpose, realizing 
that this private organization could do this job better than they could. And they invited them in. And I had said earlier on a, the podcast yesterday, you know, something, New York Pol City Police Department, with all the egos, with our, our um, scuba team out of the Special Operations Division, I'm sure that they consider themselves to be the very best in the world. So I don't think that they would accept the help of Adventures with Purpose. Also, in New York City, different bodies of water, the currents on the East River, the currents on the Hudson River, absolutely crazy, you know? So they would also get the Coast Guard in. So the level of expertise of those two units would probably preclude them from accepting the help of uh, Adventures with Purpose. But yet, I cannot do anything but praise Adventures with Purpose. In fact, I just subscribed today, and I'm going to be making a donation. Um, and I requested Doug Bishop, uh, who's the guy with the huge ZZ Top beard. Uh, hello, Sergeant George. Hello, Mickey Mantle. Uh, I requested he come on Police Off the Cuff. I would love to interview him. An amazing guy. He seems like he's the lead diver. The stories those guys have, oh my God. Like, how did they get to the level now of being as good as they are at scuba diving and searching for vehicles beneath the surface and solving cold cases? How did they get to this level? They have a couple of million uh, followers and subscribers on YouTube, and that's the only pay they get. They get paid from their YouTube um, their YouTube account and from donations. I don't know. Uh, it was unclear. There was a $75,000 um, reward for finding Kylie Rodney. I don't know if, in fact, they would accept that reward or they would take that reward. Initially, I think they said no. I mean, I think they deserve to get it, you know, and I, we all have to understand, uh, could, you could, Panda Bear, you could not see the car until it was turned right way up in reflection, but Panda Bear, the, the, if you listen to um, how they first discovered that the car was down there is that they had a sonar hit, uh, and they went in the water, I think at 10.30 in the morning, and by 11.15, they had spotted and, and pinpointed where this car was based on their sonar hit. It's pretty amazing, you know? And then as they hovered over the top or very close to it, they were able to see the vehicle. Uh, Sandra H., it would be good for them to take the reward so they can continue to help others. Absolutely. Folks, 116 in the chat, 58 thumbs up. Thank you guys so much. Yesterday, I, I set a coffee with Canon record in the backyard. I had 206 people in the chat. I mean, may not sound like a lot, but for coffee with Canon, backyard beverage, bullshitting with Bill, <laughs> or bitching with Bill, that's pretty damn good, and I was happy with it. And this was a prelude to the show yesterday afternoon, which we had 1,300 um, people in the chat, which is excellent. One time, the, our record, I think, one time uh, uh, during the Summer Wells case, we had 6,000 people in the chat. I mean, that's our personal record. And, like, I'm not just talking about, you know, being, sex, being successful at this. It's, it's a numbers game, as everything is. Uh, Milwaukee civilian hire Bill and the police off the cuff fans. After all, I heard ZZ Top say that the cops don't have any sonar use regulations. And police uh, are not trained. You know, we had spoke about that on our show yesterday, that maybe Adventures with Purpose should have a training program um, for law enforcement. And I know people say, oh, they should hang around and teach them. It's not a one-hour course. It's not a two-hour course. It should be a hands-on, maybe week course that they teach these guys and charge for it. See, law enforcement... They always talk, whenever a problem happens with law enforcement, the first thing these weasel politicians say is, they need more training. Okay, Mr. Politician, do you want to pay for it? Do you want to pay for this police department to spend $100,000 on training and part of it is going to go to Adventures with Purpose? You got the money, politician? All of a sudden the politician's like, whoa, 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 and they start doing a tap dance. Uh, 
Griminator P Patty, uh, D Doug Bishop didn't say he wouldn't take the reward. Okay, I'm waiting to hear a definitive answer. I'm not going to say they're going to take the reward when I don't know, you know. So I'm waiting to hear. Uh, adventures with purpose, however they learn the skill that they have, it's obviously obvious that they have an amazing skill set. That when you have an amazing skill set like that, can you teach others how to do it? Yeah, you can, you know. But one thing all you guys have to realize is that um, the skill set, you get better at it through practice and from using it a lot and from honing those tools and learning how to use the equipment and being the best uh, possible scuba diver you can be and also they need to learn the law so they can work hand in hand with the police after all since they lost their daughter uh phil grimaldi says i think whoever picks up the reward should make a donation to adventures with purpose you know absolutely you know i did i didn't know anything about um true crime with shannon good afternoon how are you shannon uh panda bear everyone has a gift um Yes, everyone does have a gift. You know something, but police departments have a culture. You know, they have a culture. And um, when numerous police departments work together on a common goal, there's huge egos involved. Do they always work together very well? Not, not always, you know. Each entity wants to be the one who made the big discovery that made the big arrest, that discovered the gun, that discovered the vehicle submerged in the water, that uh, recovered the body. So because of all those big law enforcement, there used to be competition in the homicide squad. We had the A team, the B team, and the D team. And there was all kinds of competition, you know. Not always healthy. Jealousy, competition. Who made the most overtime? It became a lot. Some guys would come into work and look at the overtime book to see if one team got more overtime than the other team. Jealousy, you know. And um, look, I'm a pimp competitive guy. And uh, Ivana Pona stopped defunding train and purchase equipment. Ivana, you're 100% correct. And again, I have a lot of disdain for politicians and what they've done to policing across the nation. And they're disgraceful. All they do is sit around Congress and get fatter and fatter. They're fat cats, is what basically what they are. And all they care about is their own power and their own, what, how they're going to get money and how they're going to get their constituency more money. Uh, the money needs to go to the police. It needs to be refunded, not defunded. Refund the police. Get them the training they need. You know, that's why I like this Captain uh, Sam Brown. Very humble guy. He just freely admitted. He said, look, our guys don't do this for a living. They don't search for cars every day. They don't have a lot of training in the use of sonar. These guys from Adventures with Purpose, they're the best. They're the pros. They're, they're you know, they're better than us at it. He freely admitted that. I give him kudos for that. Captain Sam Brown, you're the man, you know. But he said something that I know to be true. He said that because of the investigation, the foundation we set with the initial investigation, it made Adventures with Purpose's job that much easier, that they could fine tune their search and their investigation. I 100% agree with him. And just think about the hundreds and the thousands of interviews they're going to still have to do because the investigation is not over yet. The investigation is still alive. You know, I, I saw a lot of a lot of questions and a lot of statements. Um, DJ Moore, I agree, Bill. That was humble and honest. Hard to see these days, 100%. Guys, I'm seeing some new people even in today's show, today's chat. And again, if you're not subscribed, go on our YouTube, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. If you want to contribute to us, we have a Patreon with three different levels. And we also have a YouTube 
channel membership group and you can see the folks in the chat with the green font they're part of our youtube membership and we have five will as pony thank you so much for the 1999 super chat supreme commander i'm forgetting my name i'm not using the supreme commander name enough guys if you're new to this channel when i was an anti-crime sergeant back in 1993 to 95 92 to 95 in the 24 precinct my guys used to as jokingly used to call me the supreme commander and we we had a laugh over it I, no way of course it's a joke i'm not a supreme commander but we used to call me, my they used to call me that as a joke and I, it took on a life of its own and it was i thought it was funny as hell so uh, will as pony thank you so much for the 1999 super chat and thank you for reminding me about the supreme commander robo kathy ha i love that yeah i mean i i lo would love to see if there's any guys uh for my old anti-crime that are out there that hear that name supreme commander and have a good laugh over it because it's always good to have a nice laugh 166 in the chat 90 with the thumbs up tina Wright, hello guys thank you so much uh welcome to all the new folks in the chat for sure aunt bb2 kim allison hi marcelina shalini uh true crime with shannon hit that like that's right true crime with shannon thank you guys um i'm so excited about this uh you know about this channel now that you know for a couple of months we were stagnant you know and we weren't growing some you know you can reach a, a milestone and then go backwards and that's happened to me numerous times and you're like oh my god two months we just lost 200 subscribers it happens you know what happens so you hope it's offset by new people but i there's been times where i've lost 200 and i'd be like oh my, oh my god i lost 200 subscribers I gotta, I gotta appeal to the people across the pond, London, Ireland, England, Australia, please subscribe to Police Off the Cuff. And I know I have the worst accent ever invented. I gotta work on it. I don't have the time right now. I should take that acting class where you learn accents. You know, <laughs> Robo Kathy, hello, hello, hello. 172 in the chat. 101 thumbs up, guys. Amazing, amazing, amazing. After all, is that a Scottish accent? It's anything I can claim it to be, because I know it's horrible. I know it's horrible. <laughs> oh, my God, you know? You know, oh, you know what tune I, I, I discovered again yesterday? I used to play it on the guitar. Um, um, I am a lineman for the county, and I drive the main road. Working in the sun for another overload. I hear you singing in the wire. I can hear you through the wine. And the Wichita lineman is still on the line. Love that tune, you know. But like with the guitar, when you put it down for a while and you go back and you're like, oh, how did I forget the damn chords? Because the chords on that tune is a lot of like off the wall chords, like jazz type tune chords. And then I picked it back up and I started playing. I was like, I can't ever forget this tune. I love this tune. Glenn Campbell, you guys weren't Glenn Campbell fans. I mean, he ended his life. Um, he was on um, he w he was on tour with his band and he had Alzheimer's. And even though he couldn't remember things, he could still remember how to play guitar and how to sing those songs. Isn't that incredible? Doesn't that say that certain things are good for your brain, like exercising your brain, like music, like reading, like keeping your brain occupied that, and learning new things, you know, doing crossword puzzles, whatever you need to do to uh, exercise your brain. And that was Glenn Campbell. And, and you know who else? Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett is like has complete Alzheimer's and he did a concert recently with Lady Gaga and he could remember the words but he couldn't couldn't remember really how to get home couldn't remember almost like his name but isn't that like maybe a different um crime soap opera music is forever in the soul uh that says yeah Bill Grimaldi Tony Bennett same thing doesn't speak much but the minute he starts hearing the music he starts singing as soon as he goes and sings one of his songs he remembers everything. 
isn't that crazy? If that's not enough for all you folks out there, especially us, especially us gray panthers, I admit I'm over 65. I'm on Medicare. I never thought I would ever say that. Now I have Part B as my old insurance, you know. But you know something? <laughs> not to get into health insurance, but Medicare pays the doctors at least, you know. Uh, Scout uh, 76, uh, Adventures with Purpose is specifically focused. Uh, look, I can't say enough about them. Uh, Jay the Stelladoro. I saw that concert with Lady Gaga and Tony, and I thought my heart was going. Yeah, it was fantastic, you know, fantastic. How about even guys like Mick Jagger, 77, still on tour. Paul McCartney, he's 80 years old. He doesn't have the voice that he used to have, but can you be expected to have the voice that you had as a young Beatle when you're 80 years old? But Paul McCartney still wants to sing. He still wants to, you know, he still has an incredible voice for his age. Billy Joel, I think he's 75. 75. Uh, after all, hey, Sergeant Bill, do you have a glass breaker in your car? No, but Matilda Voss, Tina Turner. Oh, my God. Tina Turner, she's up there. She has legs. Her legs are unbelievable. She's like, I guess she's got to be close to 80 if she's not 80. She has the legs of like a rocket. Unbelievable. Marina Fury, Barry Gibb still singing. Barry Gibb is so talented. The only thing I hate is when he hits that super high note, when he's like almost like, ugh. Other than that, yeah, I like his singing. But when he hits that super high note, I'm just like, stop, don't hit that damn note anymore. Holly Golightly, Tom Jones. Amazing, amazing. Tom Jones, it's not unusual to have fun with anyone. It's not unusual to go out at any time. You want to go out at any time. And if you ever want to be in love with anyone, it's not unusual to find that I'm in love with you. <laughs> not bad. I stayed on key a little bit. I didn't have the note. I stayed on key a little bit. Not so bad. Tom Jones, incredible. Guy's in incredible shape. Rod Stewart. If, if the Hollywood people teach us anything, and I know, let's not even compare ourselves to them because they have chefs, they have workout partners, they are trainers, they have doctors that say what to eat, what not to eat. They have doctors that say what to eat, what not to eat. Uh, they have the very best of everything. And look at how they, they fight age. They fight age by living, by sleeping enough. They're not doing hard labor. Folks, 210 people in the chat. Amazing. 122 thumbs up. Diane Krause, love it. Laugh out loud. Crime Soap Up with Rod Stewart. I love Rod Stewart's voice, too. From the day I heard um, Maggie May, I was a kid, man. I just loved that tune, man. Wake up, Maggie. And he has that raspy voice. Incredible. And I was talking to my wife the other day about a song we both love, and it's, uh, um, what you want the title today? Coffee with Cannon, but, uh, part, call it Coffee with Cannon, but the investigation into, uh, Kylie Rodney. Uh, that's the second part. I think that'll, that'll draw a lot of our, um, people looking for the investigative part of this to the, uh, to here. Um, Maggie May, love that song, right? Um, Rod Stewart, man. He's got to, I mean, he's up there. I don't know, he's got to be close to 80. These guys are in incredible shape. You know, I always think about, think about the lives that these people lead. Let's just even think about Frank Sinatra. I think Frank Sinatra lived till he was like 80 or 82. Uh, think of all the traveling the world, meeting all the people. Frank Sinatra was a, a philanthropist, too. He gave away a lot of money. He gave a, a lot of his time, volunteered. He, he was really a, a great man, you know. Maybe he had a reputation of being a real cranky man, but he was, he was a great man. And uh, I don't know who does that now. Who's a musician that really gives back a lot? You know who started the, the world hunger thing was um, Harry Chapin. Harry Chapin from Long Island, from Huntington, Long Island. The song Taxi, 
fame, you know. It was raining hard in Frisco. I needed one more fare to make my night. I saw a lady at the corner. She got in at the light. <laughs> it took a while, but she looked in the mirror and she glanced at the license for my name. A smile came to her slowly. It was a sad smile just the same. Something about her was familiar. I knew I'd seen her face before. She said, I'm sure you're mistaken. And she didn't say anything more. But then she said, how are you, Harry? I said, how are you, Sue? It's been too many miles and too many smiles, but I still remember you. What a great tune that was, man. That told a story that was like, sad story, you know? Sad story, you know? About someone that made it big as an actress and someone whose dreams were going up in smoke as, and they were working as a cab driver, you know? That's life, right? That's life. Stuff like that happens, I guess. Uh, it's funny, when I sing a song, everyone pops in with all these other songs. Cats in the Cradle, uh, you know, all these other tunes of Harry Chapin. I was, I remember the day, the, the day he died, man. He had an old Volkswagen Rabbit. Remember that tune of the car, the Volkswagen Rabbit? And something happened to the car and it wouldn't accelerate. And he was in the left lane and he tried to get all the way over to the right lane. And he was going slow, like 40 miles an hour. A tractor trailer rear-ended him, and the Volkswagen Rabbit, he was in, burst into flames, which was a problem with that type of car back then. And he was burnt to death. And he was supposed to be doing a concert that night at Eisenhower Park. It was so sad, you know. And Harry Chapin had done so many concerts for free and for benefits that he didn't leave enough money for his family. So his family had no money because he played for free all the time. So that, they had a lawsuit against the, the company, the trucking company, and um, that's how they got a, couple, a million or a couple million dollars uh, for, the, for the accident that was given to the Chapin family. Horrible, you know, horrible, horrible, horrible. And then pretty much, um, I think Bruce Springsteen uh, picked up the flag and ran with it for world hunger. And remember then they would have those world hunger concerts with all these big artists. And then they had Farm Aid and they had all those philanthropic concerts, which are great. And I don't think you see as many of those today as you saw back then. I don't know why, you know. Robo Kathy, oh wow. Yeah, that's so sad about Chapin. I loved Harry Chapin, man. I thought he was so great. Uh, Patrick Glanville, Bruce and Harry were friends. Yes, I think Harry Chapin got Bruce Springsteen to um, to work for the whole World Hunger Charity. And Bruce Springsteen did do that, you know. Then a big philanthropist, too, that did a lot of um, free concerts was Will Willie Nelson. And then Neil Young, too, did the Farm Aid and all of that stuff. And uh, the power that these people have and the power of celebrity is just incredible. You know, even the power of, for example, just being rich. Look at the power that some of these people wield that are billionaires just because they're billionaires, you know. Uh, Jason O. Evans will not see this new crap movie about Elvis. Uh, you know, some people said that that Elvis movie was pretty good. I've heard people say uh, someone's turning their damn lawnmower on. Uh oh, I got to be on the air here. <laughs> you hear, I hear the lawnmower. At least uh, Joshua, Jason O. Evans, the movie wasn't good. Joshua said he saw the uh, duty run. <laughs> He's asking, is this the Supreme Commander? It sure is. Backyard beverage coffee with Cannon, bitching with Bill, and here we are, 30,000 plus duty run. Thank you for your part in that, your help with that. You're directing your fans to my show. Thank you so much. T 
Today I think we hit a new milestone. I think I saw we were at 213 and then we went back the other way. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm having fun, you know, guys. I love the Elvis movie. Well done, Gail Salatori. See, not everyone feels the same way, you know. Jamie Pimentel. Uh, Selena, Hope From Me Farm. Duty Ron. Hi, Duty Ron. Cherry Hill. Uh, look at all these Duty Ron fans. True Crime with Shannon. Hey, Duty Ron. Everyone's saying hello to Duty Ron. Uh, Duty Ron, Bill, we need to cross pollinate. That's for sure. That's for sure. You're, we're we're cross pollinating. I think we're doing pretty well. I, I mean, I think Duty Ron's at 129,000, so he's in a whole different league than me, you know? Like, he gets the best table at the restaurants. I'm just starting to be recognized, you know? Uh, <laughs> Robo Kathy, I just watched it but didn't care for the way they portrayed his mom as an alcoholic. Not true. Um, and then, you know, I don't know how they portrayed his father, Vernon, but in a lot of movies they showed that Vernon Presley seemed to be like just in the background, like a very weak man that wasn't involved in his son's career or anything to do with his son. Like the mother was that strong character. And then that Colonel Tom Parker, he's not ever portrayed maybe because he was he was an ass who knows uh he controlled elvis his whole career and he probably controlled a lot of money gail salatori thank you for the 499 super chat keep it up thank you we're going to try as hard as we can to keep it going holly go lightly no one puts baby in the corner <laughs> is that from dirty dancing is that from the the movie dirty dancing i remember that line you know jackie jakey five hi folks what a beautiful day, guys. Get This is like the last week or two of, uh, of the swimming pool. Going to have to fold up the pool pretty soon. Colonel Parker was a grifter. He was from Holland, not America. Uh, Kimberly Myers, hello, Duty Ron. The truth. So I think today I'm going to do uh, another show, of probably around 4, but four or 5-ish, on more of the investigation Uh on, Ky on Kylie Rodney and talk about the investigation and where do they go from here I'm sorry about this damn lawnmower they had to cut the lawn Jason Evans no watch that's the way it is not Elvis uh, Karen Kennedy good morning from San Diego love San Diego haven't been there in a bunch of years but love it Selena hope for me farm Milwaukee civilian dog days of summer Hi, what's your thoughts on Ryan Upchurch involved with the case? I don't know about Ryan Upchurch much. Duty Ron, yes, he has Marilyn. Uh, Michael Marcaculi, great show. Cheers, guys. B40, B40. She was drunk, drove into water, in my opinion. You know, guys, some of the, like, the uh, people in the chat yesterday talking about that how, how do we know that the vehicle, the Honda CRV, wasn't put in the. Um, oh my God, this lawnmower is annoying as hell. Let me pick this up, get away from this a little bit. Uh, how do we know that? Um, I, I'm sorry, guys, but I just want to move the hell away from this a little. Um, I hope I don't walk into the pool. Uh, let's move away. Someone said in the chat yesterday, how do we know that she wasn't put in the water? Um, after the the police had checked and that's why they missed it is there anyone that actually really seriously believes that uh <laughs> milwaukee civilian war on safari with bill i had to get the hell away from that damn lawnmower you know you know one of the things um jakey five you're walking better yeah i just went to see um my hip surgeon today you know and uh he took a look at the hip and he's like oh it looks great but this surgeon loves to admire his own work, you know. But that's okay. I'm glad it's I'm glad it's okay. I actually did a half mile on the spin bike today, which I'm happy with. And later on I'm gonna take my mile walk. Because I'm supposed to do a mile walk every single day. And I'm doing it. I'm doing it, guys, you know. Uh, 205. Oh my god, we're at 205. Can we break 213? We hit 213 before. 206, 155 thumbs up. My God, I'm amazed. Hello, Ochella. Maybe I'm amazed at the way you love me all the time. Maybe I'm amazed at the way I love you. <laughs> that's 
that song goes too high. Uh, Gail Salatori, great doctor. Yes, the doctor actually is one of the top. The doctor I went to for my hip is actually one of the top hip surgeons in the Northeast, even though he's up in Westchester. He's as good or better than any of the hot shots in the city. And he's 47, 48 years old. He's done 5,000 hips. That's the type of experience I want. That's why he's so good at it, right? The same thing is why Adventures with Purpose are so good at doing what they do. They do it all the time, right? Uh, Marilyn Minetta, be careful on your walk. It's going to be very hot. Bring your bottled water. Thank you. You guys are like my mom, you know, or my wife. Bring your bottled water. Make sure you bring your water with you. <laughs> That's not a good interpretation or impersonation of my wife, you know. Uh, <laughs> where is everyone from? Yeah, folks, let me know where you're from. And uh, if you're new, put a one in the chat. That's an old duty run technique. Uh, Holly Golightly, hi, California, from Colorado. Whoa. My son, Casey, is in Denver. He's living in Denver right now. German Shepherd Mom, uh, Matilda Voss, the Netherlands. Oh, my God. One, Philly, true crime with Shannon. Ha, ha, ha. Listen to this damn lawnmower. Who are they to cut their damn lawn during the show? Don't they know it's bitching with Bill? Now it's become bitching with Bill, you know? It's unbelievable. Stop cutting your damn lawn during the, the show. Let me walk around a little bit. I still want to show you the pool. I'll stand into the grass. Well, I don't want you guys to get seasick here, you know? So, uh, David Kahn, Naples, Florida, beautiful. Uh, Fonda Milanese, Illinois, Miss Kurt Cobain, Buffalo, go Bills. The Bills are going to be kick ass this year. That team looks really, oh my God. And I'm a Jet fan. I think they're going to mop the Jets off the field. They, uh, Buffalo, unbelievable. 221, we had 221 in the chat. 170 thumbs up. Wow. I think I'm on the map. I think Duty Ron Help put me on the map. And Josh, our engineer, Oh my God, uh, crime soap opera, uh, South, someone's from South Africa, Aberdeen, Scotland, Nikki Jameson, wow. Nola Mom, Nolans, New Orleans, Louisiana, not as loud to us as you, find the, oh, the damn lawnmower, yeah, but it's like annoying, you know, it's just annoying. It's over there, and it's right in my ear. Those are the same people that have a damn chicken that's always making noise, you know. Uh, Sergeant Bill, so pleased that your hip is really improving. Good that you are going on the spin machine. Yeah, I mean, I want to get back to taking spin classes. You know, I still have that damn AFib, and now it's, they say it's A-flutter. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it anymore, but I have that procedure done the second time on August 31st. So I hope I get rid of it this time. But, guys, you got to get, you know, you got to take, roll with the punches, as they say. 225 in the chat. Oh, my God. I feel like Crazy Eddie. These prices are insane. <laughs> These subscribers are insane. <laughs> Some of you guys are too young to know who the hell Crazy Eddie is or was. But uh, if you knew who he is or was, that would make you laugh, you know? Uh, Selena, Hope for Me Farm. Woohoo! Sunny D, North Carolina. Wow. Moonlight View, Show the Love, True Crime with Shannon. Rooster is worth, yeah, off. Oh. A rooster with that cock-a-doodle-doo sound. Oh my God, 223 in the chat, wow. Duty Ron's laughing here. Uh, Miss Pumba, hello, Duty Ron. Canada, Tina Wright from Canada. Oh my God, we are truly an international. We are the United Nations here at Police Off the Cuff Real Crime Stories. We are all international. <laughs> we have fans and subscribers from all over the world. SEC, Roll Tide, I don't. You know something? I like Alabama. I can't stand their coach, uh, Nick, Sa Nick Saban. I just, he's such a, ugh. He's just an arrogant, you know, an arrogant guy. I just, I just hate his attitude. I don't know. I guess to be a real successful coach, you've got to be an arrogant prick, I think, you know. Uh, Martha, so funny, Bill. Uh, Tina Wright, hello, Phil. Go Vols. Nick Saban, boo. I don't like that guy. You know, his father, um, Lou Saban, I think it was, was a coach of the Buffalo Bills. Isn't that unbelievable? So, like, coaching is definitely um, runs in families. You know, people stay in the coaching biz, and families stay in it, and it's, uh, 
it's just totally incredible. Nobody beats the whiz. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the things I like about this show is that you have to you have to have some humor. You have to have humor in life, even though most of the topics we cover are super serious. But you you have to have humor, or else you know something. What's the point? You know, if you watch a movie or you watch a, a play or you watch anything. If there's no humor, it's just like, because life has humor, doesn't it? I mean, even when we uh, do the Ron, Bill Go Easy, you have a heart condition. <laughs> five dollar super chat, he's giving me five just in case I die on the air. <laughs> Towards the burial. <laughs> uh, Ephrata, Pennsylvania, wow. Very, very cool. Guys, I'm at 45 minutes. I, it, goes, it just flies by. It just flies by, I cannot believe how fast, even with that damn lawnmower. It, uh, Fonda Miller, Todd Carson, one Warrensburg, New York, Rocky. Hey there, sir, Sergeant Bill. Hey, guys. Marilyn Minetta, you gotta laugh. 100%. 224 in the chat. 182 thumbs up. We're at 226 now. Oh, my God. Could we bust up to 230? Well, how about, what if I say 250? Could we do that? I'll stay on till 50 minutes. We're at 46.23. I don't know. We may have hit the top. Uh, uh, Selena, I wish I could have read that. Uh, I saw you were a survivor of minor tra sex trafficking. I'd love to read that again if you want to repost it uh, and, and have your cause on the screen. But uh, now they're using the damn blower. Oh, my God. Uh, Duty Ron, great to see all the new and returning friends here. Guys, thank you so much. This is really... Uh, Governor 247, new subscriber from Scotland. Welcome, welcome aboard. Coffee with lawn mowing. Yes, I, I don't want to advertise that. I'd rather say lawn mowing with bitching with Bill because it's going to make me complain, definitely. Marilyn Minetta, we love you, Bill. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate all, all of you. This is like a great, it's like, you know, it, it's good to be successful at something. And I feel like I've got a modicum of success from hitting this 30,000 milestone, you know. Milwaukee civilian, your son goes to, or your nephew goes to Minnesota, Big Ten family. Boston Christian, yay Scotland, wow, we can do it, Moonlight View. What's this channel about? I'm new, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is called Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories, but sometimes during the daytime, I have a lighter show, and it's called Coffee with Cannon, uh, Backyard Beverage, Bitching with Bill, and we just sort of have a conversation, you know. And uh, uh, great, you know, it's 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 fun. And I don't know. And at nighttime, the other shows, we have uh, you know real crime stories, and we tell real crime stories from a police perspective. I'm a retired NYPD homicide sergeant, and my co-host Phil Grimaldi is a retired NYPD detective. So, uh, B. Mealy, hello from St. Johns County, Florida. Hello, hello, uh, Boston Nick MMA. Thank you for your service. Thank you for thanking me for my service. 4825 coffee and grass clippings. <laughs> that, I, I mean, I want to go over there and punch that guy right in the nose, man. And tell him, I do my show around 1 o'clock. Keep your damn lawnmower off. These lawnmowers are insane. <laughs> oh, I can do my act in Vegas right now? I don't know. I don't know. Uh... Meanwhile, Mondays and Thursdays, Amber Gloria rehabbing his hard work. Keep at it. Thank you. Duty Ron, Cannon, easy. <laughs> Phil Grimaldi, it's not so bad, Bill. Rocky, for sure, Bill. Easy, Sergeant Sergeant Bill, a celeb. 49, guys, I got one more minute, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exit stage left. I want to thank everyone that came by today. I want to not thank that idiot with his lawnmower. Uh... He made me have to speak louder and listen to that damn thing. It sounds like he's coming toward my yard, you know. I should get the hose and hose this guy down. It's so ridiculous with his damn lawnmower. But uh, 49, Nikki Jameson, I love the passion you and Ron put into your lives. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Don Salami and Vito must pay your neighbor a visit. That's for sure. I could use Don Salami's boys, Nikki, no neck. Take a visit over there to the lawnmower guy. Uh, Michael Mokakuli, blow it up. <laughs> Do another live, like like from both of us. <laughs> Susie A, 
Phil, send Nikki no neck. That's what I just said. Guys, have a great day. This was a hell of a lot of fun, you know? This is fun, you know? God bless. I'll see you guys later on tonight.